It's Jover, ladies and gentlemen. It's Jover for one. John Ricciatello, who was once CEO of Electronic Arts and who is infamous for putting out this statement in front of investors where he imagined a future where live services are the new normal and people would pay real money for, say, bullets in an FPS every time you need a reload, among other evil suggestions. There's literally a clip of this on YouTube in a video titled EACO John Ricciatello on gaming microtransactions. Beyond that, it was under his tenure as CEO of Unity that we saw prices for Unity plans go up. We saw the merger with Iron Source, which angered developers because that was a company associated with malicious adware. And then beyond that, we saw layoffs happen recently on May of 2023, though this has been kind of an across the board thing in the games industry. As of late, we've seen so many layoffs across the board, across so many different studios and gaming companies. But the nail in the coffin for John Ricciatello was Unity's initial plan to implement this monetization system where they would charge developers 20 cents per installation on the Unity Personal and Unity Plus tier, and then on Unity Pro and Enterprise, it would charge these prices per installation with no clear boundaries on the number of installs per user. So if a user decides to install a game on multiple devices, say on a PC, laptop, Steam Deck, and ROG Ally, that's four installs that a developer would get charged for. Beyond that, no boundaries or details on how they track those installations, no assurances on tracking fraudulent or pirated installations, making it possible for people to essentially fake install or install bomb so that if they don't like a certain developer, they can make it so that uh, it looks like a game was installed a bunch of times and rack up fees for developers to a point where it could be financially compromising. And the real kicker is that not only were developers not notified about this upcoming change, but also, all games were initially meant to be affected no matter which version of Unity or which contract was signed. Instead of this being a new thing that applies with the new version of the engine, initially, this was going to apply to all games no matter when it was made. So this was a huge rug pull on developers who, you know, defined certain budgets based on the existing rules the rules were then changed on them without any notification, without any heads up. And with how few boundaries and details there were surrounding these per installation fees and how explodable this was, developers were just utterly baffled and the trust was just utterly shattered. If you want the full details on that, you can check out my video here titled Unity Faces Mass Outrage and Revolt from Devs After Charging Fees for Game Installs. There's a 42 minute video that dives into all the nitty gritty details and all of the developer responses. And then beyond that, we have this video right here that I released days later called Unity Respond to Mass Revolt from Devs After Trying to Charge Devs for Game Installs, where they backpedaled by releasing this letter where they apologized straight up right here. They say, I am sorry. This was written by Mark Witten. Uh, he leads Unity Create, which includes the Unity Engine and editor teams. And they made some changes that definitely improved things dramatically. So for Unity Personal, which is where a lot of up and coming indie developers start with, they'll be removing the runtime fee entirely, meaning no charge, no installation fees, nothing to worry about in terms of fees. And they will also be increasing the cap from $100,000 to $200,000. The cap that after you exceed, you have to upgrade to a higher tier of Unity, Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise. And they'll be removing the requirement to use the Made With Unity splash screen for Unity personal users. So that's a huge improvement for those who want to use Unity to test the waters on whether they want to become game developers. And then no game with less than a million dollars in trailing 12 month revenue will be subject to the fee. And then upgrading to Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise, the policy will only apply beginning with the next LTS version of Unity shipping in 2024 and beyond. So your games that are currently shipped and the projects you're currently working on will not be included or affected unless you choose to upgrade them to this new version of Unity. And then really important is that Unity set a ceiling for the kinds of fees you can accrue by using this engine. For games that are subject to the runtime fee, we're giving you a choice of either a 2.5% revenue share or the calculated amount based on the number of new people engaging with your game each month. So at most, you'll be paying 2.5% revenue share, maybe less if 
your installation numbers and the fees accrued there it turns out to be less than 2.5 percent revenue share and then when it comes to the issue of how do you keep track of installations while well, they made us add these numbers are self-reported from data you already have available you'll always be billed the lesser amount between the installation fee or 2.5 percent revenue share there's a chart that they release that looks like this that details this pretty clearly and suddenly everything looks a lot more reasonable but again this is them backpedaling hard after attempting something really egregious. And so the trust is completely broken because developers can't trust that Unity won't, you know, years down the line, try to change the rules on them again. The trust is really what's been most impacted by all of this. Uh, plenty of developers, despite this more reasonable change, are thinking of moving away from Unity. The damage to the company's image was pretty severe, and the speculation was that somebody would take the fall for this, and that turned out to be none other than CEO John Ricciatello, who will be retiring the company states here in this official statement published on October 9th, 2023, which reads, Unity today announced that John Ricciatello will retire as president, CEO, chairman, and a member of the company's board of directors effective immediately. James M. Whitehurst has been appointed interim CEO, president, and a member of the board. Royloff Botha, lead independent director of the Unity board, has been appointed chairman. Mr. Richtello will continue to advise Unity to ensure a smooth transition. And in the meantime, they're doing a comprehensive search process to identify the next permanent CEO. And then here are some statements from Botha and from Richitello. It's typical corporate stuff. Working with Unity under John's leadership has been one of the highlights of my career. John joined the Unity board in 2013 and stepped in to lead the company in 2014 at a time when we faced significant challenges. John has led Unity through incredible growth over the last 10 years, helping us transition from a perpetual license to a subscription model, enabling developers to monetize, building other game services to serve our creator community, leading us through an IPO and positioning us as a pioneer in the developer community. Unity would not be where it is today without the impact of his contributions. I remain excited for the future of Unity. And then Richitello had a much shorter statement to give. He probably wasn't planning on retiring in the year 2023, but then as this shit show unfolded, uh, this kind of became an obvious way things would play out. He said, it's been a privilege to lead Unity for nearly a decade and serve our employees, customers, developers, and partners, all of whom have been instrumental to the company's growth. I look forward to supporting Unity through the transition and following the company's future success. He doesn't say anything along the lines of, oh, you know, for personal reasons, I had to retire. He just gives a very brief statement. And it's very clear that Richitello became the board of directors uh, scapegoat for the damage that had been done to the company after recent decisions surrounding this idea of charging developers fees for every time a user installs a game without thinking the plan through. Now, before you all celebrate and say the evil is defeated, Unity is going to get back on track, do you keep in mind that John Richitello is just a small piece of the puzzle? The board of directors ultimately rule this company, and many members of the board are still present at the company. John Richitello no doubt had a large role to play in some of the misgivings surrounding Unity, but there's this Reddit thread that I want to highlight, published 25 days ago back in September 14th, 2023. So two days after Unity made that initial announcement of the installation fees that shows that the board members were also instrumental to the downfall of Unity. Uh, it reads right here, I know people don't want to hear this. You shouldn't be blaming John Ricciatello. He is only the scapegoat and his exit is not necessarily going to fix the company so long as the current board of directors remain. It reads right here that John Ricciatello has been the CEO of Unity since 2014. He oversaw its progress from that engine that lets you port your game to anything to the platform that every single mobile game is made on and the backbone of the indie developer market. The main reason why so many people are hearing about him being the CEO now is because he had, past tense, he had been doing a relatively good job until recent years. What changed in 2020, Unity went public, which is often when corporations become corrupted by investor interests who become the priority over the customers. And a bunch of shitheads bought their way onto Unity's board of directors. Ultimately, the CEO works for the board. So when these new bosses tell him to do something self-destructive, 
he does it. This is not me trying to redeem John Ricciatello. This man is very much a corporate suit. This is not going to erase the fact that John Ricciatello did uh, rejoice at the notion of charging people for bullets when they have to reload in a first-person shooter game. He very much had very uh, shady and evil ideas about where the future of gaming should be headed. But the state of Unity right now is not strictly just due to John Ricciatello's leadership as CEO. Uh, He's still very much uh, a puppet in all this, and his exit from the company is not going to suddenly reform the company uh, because he's just a scapegoat. uh, And there are other members of this company who are at the top of the pyramid who still have a lot of influence and who could continue to lead Unity down this spiral. And this Reddit thread does a really good job of painting the picture that we should be looking at where this is not the ultimate solution. You know, John Ricciatello getting his butt kicked out of the company, like, yes, that feels good because, you know, many people resent the way he runs companies. Uh, But just know that this is not the huge victory some people might perceive this event as. The rot is not all vanquished. There's plenty of rot still at this company. Here are the names you should be talking about instead of John, says this Reddit user. And this Reddit thread was shared by a number of industry pundits who found this take interesting. So names to keep in mind include Tomer Barzeev, Relof Botha, and Egon Durban. Relof Botha might seem familiar to you. That's because he is featured in the statement that the company put out in regards to John Ricciatello retiring, Ralph Botha, lead independent director of the Unity board, has been appointed chairman. And so going back to the Reddit thread, here's some interesting facts that this user found. Remember Iron Source, that dog shit monetization company with all the malware? Unity bought them for $4.4 billion. Tomer Barziv is the founder of Iron Source, and following the merger, he became Unity's third president, along with John and Mark. Yes, this is the asshole who sold a package of malware under the guise of monetization software and ultimately is the root cause of this install tax. How Unity got infected with Iron Source? Well, uh, Sequoia Capital and Silver Lake pledged to invest $1 billion into Unity if the deal went through. But the math doesn't add up for Unity to trade $4.4 billion to buy a plague blanket of a company only to receive $1 billion in return, especially when a rival mobile monetization company offered to pay Unity $17 billion if they called off the Iron Source deal and merged with them instead. Unless that $1 billion was for the sake of C-suite or corporate level, C-level bonuses, in which case all this makes perfect sense. This was never about bettering the company and its products. It was very much about lining the pockets of those at the top. This Reddit thread further continues. Railoff is the director of Sequoia. Egon is the founder of Silver Lake. These two names right here, Railoff Botha and Egon Durbin, whose companies Sequoia Capital and Silver Lake are listed here. Sequoia Capital and Silver Lake pledged to invest a billion dollars into Unity if the deal went through. Apparently, they snaked their way into Unity, and both of them have ties back to Elon Musk, which is pretty obvious for how fast Unity has caught on fire. And with Egon specifically, there's more of a history. He was on Twitter's board and was the one who pushed to have them accept the deal and then got thrown off the board when they realized that he was just spying for Elon during the resulting lawsuit. He also was the one who helped Elon with his fake taking Tesla private scam. So not the best entity to have on your board of directors and to help lead a company like Unity. Reloff was the CFO of PayPal. PayPal also being obviously heavily tied to Elon Musk before it got acquired and has a long history of being involved with mergers that result in a lot of money for some, but absolute shit deals for end users and employees. And then here's a prediction he made that turned out to be true. I think John Ricciatello is done with Unity, but not in the yay us consumers have protested hard enough to get him fired kind of way the internet wants. I think he was done in 2020 when he went from being the guy actually running the company to the guy who answers to a room full of investment fuckheads of the 13 board members, 11 are investment managers, and then gets to take the blame for their shit decisions. Again, John Ricciatello does not deserve any love whatsoever, but in this scenario, it sure sounds like John Ricciatello was always set up to be the scapegoat for when something shitty happens. And with this situation, with the whole installation fees having blown up to a degree that maybe they didn't expect, they found this to be the perfect scenario and opportunity to get rid of John Ricciatello. To use him as the fall guy and create this narrative that John Ricciatello is solely responsible for this so that they can avoid negative PR or take that negative PR and attach it to John Ricciatello so that when he departs, the negative PR can go with him 
and then the board of directors and the people who are going to start taking over can kind of ride this wave out and you know essentially just continue their takeover of unity and uh, have just more control over it and so if anything unity things with unity might get worse because once upon a time before things went public before unity went public as a company John Ricciatello had been doing all right, as in, you know, he, you know, there was progress made for the engine up until it went public. And then that's when the CEO and the board had to start appealing to investors and start getting into just shady deals and shady shenanigans that negatively impacted the product uh, in favor of, you know, just money making scams and schemes and business tactics. And so, with the board members who are responsible for so much of what's happening with Unity still in play, I don't suspect John Richitello's departure is going to improve things much. If anything, it just might give the board of directors more car blanche to fuck things up. And so this user says, I feel like the reason why John Richitello sold his stock is because he knew this was a shit idea that was going to tank the company. For those who don't know, a bunch of executives, including John Ricciatello, sold stocks before the announcement of this installation fee thing was made. And so people were wondering, wait a minute, that seems pretty suspicious. And it seemed as though John Ricciatello had some semblance of an idea that uh, this was not going to go down well. But these assholes wouldn't listen. These assholes referring to the board of directors. So he cashed out his stock and will be announcing his retirement at the start of Q4, which is exactly what ended up happening. And then this Reddit user makes the following prediction. Don't be shocked when Tomer Barzeev, the co-founder of Iron Source, who was mentioned in this thread, gets named as his replacement. We don't know whether that's what's going to end up happening, but if it does, Man, things are going to look bleak for the company. I have little doubt that John Ricciatello is not blameless for a lot of Unity's recent woes, but um, there are far more cancerous things within Unity, it would seem, based on uh, this particular reporting, this particular bit of insight that might indicate this is not some kind of major regime reform. This is just one man taking the fall for a situation that was... Uh, the responsibility of a bunch of people who are still at the company and who will remain at the company for many years to come. And if uh, they continue with some of the antics that they try to pull off here with the insulation fee before they hard backpedal into the current model, um, then uh, we might just see the further degradation of Unity and uh, developers might currently be better off not trusting Unity and not being too optimistic about its revival until there's ample proof over the long term that uh, Unity won't pull what they try to pull ever again. But again, the trust is gone, and for good reason. And uh, with board members who engage in shady shenanigans still kind of present, I think the best thing uh, for the long term, just the safest thing to do, the most uh, risk-adverse thing to do, uh, is to go with another engine, one that has a more sustained history of stability where, you know, they don't pull shady shenanigans like this. Like, yes, uh, you know, Unreal Engine is a little more expensive to make games with in terms of the fees you have to pay to the company, but uh, Unreal Engine has never tried to pull something like this. Um, it is still a safer choice uh, over the long term because uh, it's far less likely that... Uh, you get screwed over on the level that Unity tried to screw over developers recently. Um, and there are other engines as well that are uh, good options. Godot, I think, is uh, kind of up and coming now because of all of these uh, Unity shenanigans. Um, that just might be for the best. Uh, I'm not on the development side of things, though, so I'm kind of just, uh, just speaking out of my ass, I suppose. Um, but, uh, yeah, developers already uh, feel the trust is lacking. Um, and John Ricciatello's departure shouldn't be taken as a sign of oh we should just now trust unity again the you know this is the solution to our problem i don't think it is i think the problems will persist um or at least it should be perceived as such until unity proves otherwise is my opinion at least but i'd love to hear what your thoughts and opinions are on john richello's departure the implications of this particular reddit thread that gives some i think potentially valuable insight into how this whole picture might actually look like 
And uh, yeah, what do you think the future holds for Unity? Share your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.